Hello friends and welcome back to another guide for Marvel Contest of Champions. Although this is technically my fourth guide for the Labyrinth of Legends, the first three were entirely focused on the easy path. This entry of the guide is meant for those players who have already completed their first path and now have an eye towards exploration. Similar to the previous installment, this guide will be focused primarily on a champ by champ review of all the remaining opponents you'll be seeing in the Labyrinth. All the opponents listed in this guide have enigmatic abilities, and other than a few notable exceptions, all have a health pool that is double of what you saw on the easy path. Given that many of these opponents exist on multiple paths, we'll go through the list alphabetically. I won't be revisiting Abomination, Guillotine, OG Spidey, and X-23 since we covered them in Part 3. Remember, you'll have to fight each of these champions at least once, and several of them more than once. Before I continue with the guide, I want to again make mention of reworked champions. As of this recording, there are a total of six champions in the remainder of the Labyrinth that have received some sort of change since 2017, with more on the way. These changes range from a small mechanical adjustment to a complete rework to a huge nerf. In any case, it's important to remind you that any and all reworks that occur to champions in the game do not affect the opponents you'll be seeing inside the Labyrinth. I will again call out these reworked champions as we go, but as with the previous installment of the guide, I wanted to make sure that you were aware of this up front. As we go through the guide, I'll note any reworked champions with an asterisk. Ready? Okay, let's do it. We'll start with one of the most difficult fights you'll encounter during your quest for exploration. Agent Venom's enigmatic ability works very similar to the Bane node, except instead of passing a degen back and forth, it's a 3 second timer. When the timer is on you, you must hit Agent Venom within that 3 seconds, or you will receive a very nasty incinerate debuff. Agent Venom's tenacity means that he will almost always shrug the debuff off when it activates on him. So this makes for a pretty frantic fight. Now back when Labyrinth was introduced, there wasn't a single champion in the game who was immune to incinerate, and there wouldn't be one introduced until later that year. These days though, we have lots of champions who are immune to it, and thus are fantastic counters for this fight. In my personal opinion, the best option for this fight is Colossus. Colossus not only has the necessary immunity and class advantage, but if he's duped, the Incinerates have a chance to give him more armor and thus increase his damage. He can get the one shot in this fight without too much trouble at all. Another top option is Apocalypse, who will develop immunity to the Incinerate over time and will also counter Agent Venom's tenacity, but only during the first Enrage timer. Now in general, you want somebody who can deal with the debuff without relying on debuffs themselves for their damage. Havoc has the immunity and will punish Agent Venom's tenacity. I've also seen solos with Ghost and Aegon, each of whom have easy ways to deal with the Incinerate. An underrated option is Blade. So unlike other fights that you'd bring him for, you don't really need a synergy here. Keep your power at 3 bars, and if you get the Incinerate on you, it will end as quickly as it started. While there are other skill champs who can deal with debuffs, none of them are very reliable and are not really worth bringing to this fight. Once you have the debuff countered, it really just becomes a long, normal fight against Agent Venom. As far as Labyrinth fights go, this one against Black Panther Civil War is really pretty easy. Now Black Panther doesn't have as large a health pool as other enigmatic opponents, but that's because his enigmatic ability gives him a pair of resistance passives that massively reduce your damage to him. Every 10 hits in your combo, the passives will go away for 10 seconds. Now you don't really need a specific counter to this fight, but any damage over time effects will go make it go marginally faster. Now with the lowered health pool, the fight is about the same length as any other. Feel free to use your primary attacker here. As usual with Black Panther, don't try and parry him when he has an armor up active. Even if you've used up all your parries from the Limber node, he will still reflect the full length parry stun back to you. If you struggle with his special 1 like I do, you can bait out enough heavies and then push him towards his special 2. Black Widow can be one of the most challenging fights in this content. Whenever Black Widow uses a special attack, she gets a 3 second passive shield. If you hit her while this shield is active, you are passively stunned, which means a full 5 hit combo to the face. Now although the duration of the shield completely prevents punishing her special 1, there is a very small window after her special 2 where you can go in and attack if your timing is perfect. In general though, I would advise against doing this. It's safer to just avoid punishing her specials in the first place. But the fun doesn't end with Black Widow there. She also has a natural chance to evade on top of the Labyrinth Evade, which can result in some very frustrating deaths. One final thing to note here is that champions like Nick Fury or Apocalypse, who can gain some form of stun immunity, will still be stunned by this node. 
You'll be taking a lot of block damage here, so don't be afraid to heal up to full on every attempt. Champions that can counter her evade will help here, but aren't really necessary. The best approach to this fight is just to end it as quickly as possible and move on. So in that sense, your best bet is just to use your primary attacker rather than try and counter her node. Unlike his red variant on the easy path, Blue Cyclops is a top 3 most challenging, or effective as some might say, opponent in this content. When Cyclops reaches a bar of power, he becomes permanently and passively unblockable until he either hits you or you push him to 2 bars. The unblockable doesn't go away if he uses his special 1, which means that for the vast majority of this fight you will not be able to block at all. Now there are 4 superb counters for this fight, and in my opinion, the best one is Ghost. Ghost has class advantage, can get easy openings while Cyclops is unblockable, and can effortlessly keep the rhythm of the fight going by phasing through his special attacks. The other three best options are Aegon, Nick Fury, and Strife, because they each have easy and permanent access to unblockable themselves. So with any of those champions, once Cyclops reaches a bar of power, you don't really have to risk an intercept to get an opening. You can just go in and hit him. Now if you don't have any of those champs available, you're in for a pretty difficult fight. Once he's unblockable, your only options are to intercept or to hit into his block enough to give him a special attack that you can then punish. So this is a fight where you may want to avoid completely until you have a solid counter for it, uh, otherwise you may find yourself using a considerable amount of items getting past it. Daredevil received a complete rework in late 2020 and his pre-buff version is much easier to deal with. In Labyrinth he'll have his old abilities but his new animations which include his new lengthy special attacks. Daredevil's enigmatic passively degenerates you whenever you hold your block. Now the potency of this degen is proportionate to your missing health, which means the closer you are to dying, the more dangerous holding block will be for you. The first thing to know here is that there is a very slight delay in the degen activating, so you do have time to tap your block to parry, or to stop your champion from trotting forward. The second thing is that if you are at a gold bar of health, you will take no degen at all and can safely hold block for as long as you want. This gives sustainable champions a distinct advantage since they can heal back the degen damage and then potentially prevent it completely. Speaking of sustainable champions, this is one fight in the labyrinth that I would argue Guillotine 2099 is far better suited for than Aegon. With her stability function active if you play well, limit your parries, and intercept whenever possible, it's possible to play this entire fight with her at full health and thus take no degen at all. Even if you do take some damage, skillful play can allow you to get back up to full health by the end of it. Now since this is the older Daredevil, he will have a small chance to auto-evade projectile attacks, so you may want to avoid champions who utilize those. Ghost will also excel here because her playstyle doesn't require you to hold block very often. Overall, this is another fight in this content that doesn't really necessitate a specific counter, but rather demands that you change your playstyle to adapt instead. Next on our list is Doctor Strange, or to those of us who know him well, Doctor Spam. Now, the way Doctor Strange's enigmatic ability is worded is very misleading. It says that when you block him, he will steal 5% of your power, but what it actually means is that he will gain 5% of power whenever he hits your block, even if you have no power to steal. It's like a super-powered version of the Kinetic Transference node. Doctor Strange's specials are pretty challenging to fully evade, so this enigmatic ability, coupled with his natural power gain, makes him a very difficult opponent. And on top of all of that, this version of Doctor Strange is the pre-nerfed version, which means his lifesteal phase is extremely powerful. During this phase, he will heal over 50,000 health per hit if he tags you, which means if you take a full combo, it's going to cost you a quarter million hit points of your hard work. Now there's one champion in the game right now who can make this fight a complete walk in the park, and that is Void. As soon as Void gets two petrified debuffs applied, he completely shuts down the power gain and the enigmatic ability for the remainder of the fight as long as you stick to your special one. Void requires no synergies for this fight and is absolutely worth bringing a spot on your team for. Now a tactic that I use during my first run against this guy is to use Void to reverse Doctor Strange's lifesteal. I've covered this in a separate video, but the basic idea is that you need Fear of the Void and two Petrifies, and then you just let Strange hit you and he will take massive amounts of damage. Full disclosure though, I suspect that this may have been silently nerfed, because once I published the video of me using this heal reversal method, it didn't work on any of my subsequent encounters with him. Now there are other long time bugs in the labyrinth though, so your mileage may vary. Now if you don't have Void, another solid power controller like Magic may serve you well here. 
Other champions with access to Petrify will work, but none are as easy to use as Void is. Human Torch can also put in some huge damage numbers here as well. Without a counter to the power gain though, expect this fight to take you several revives. The good news though, is that by the end of it you'll be a master at evading his special attacks. Similar to Black Panther, Electro is another Labyrinth opponent who has a smaller health pool despite possessing an enigmatic ability. This is because his enigmatic ability is basically an empowered version of his natural static shock damage. Every 15 seconds, the static shock will deal more damage back than normal for 5 seconds. Your best counters here are your typical electro counters. That is, anyone who can reduce the ability accuracy of the static shock. Now, I used a Max Sig Namor for this fight, and it was an easy one-shot. Another great option here is a duped Gwenpool, who will turn off the ability completely at and above 50 hits. The newly buffed Falcon can eliminate this damage whenever he's locked on, and he can also get some pretty big crits thanks to his signature ability. A ramped up Aegon can also take this fight, as he will reduce the opponent's ability accuracy starting at 500 combo. Archangel can put in some big damage and would also be a good choice. Uh, a Max Sig Daredevil Hell's Kitchen will also shut off the static shock above 15 hits. This is another fight where I think you'll be spending a lot of revives without an effective counter. Groot is another opponent in the Labyrinth with a lowered health pool, which only helps in making him one of the easiest opponents of all. Groot's enigmatic ability gives him a regeneration buff whenever you activate a regeneration buff. So the easiest solution here is to just not use anyone who regens. <laughs> Your primary attacker should be able to handle this fight without any issues at all, as it's basically just a standard Groot fight. It really is that easy. The next opponent we're going to talk about is one of my favorite fights in the content, and that is Hulkbuster. Now, Hulkbuster received a significant rework in this past year, and the Labyrinth version is far less powerful. That said, his enigmatic ability can make him one of the most dangerous. Hulkbuster has a Thorns mechanic that activates when you hit into his block. Every subsequent time that you do this, the Thorns damage increases exponentially. Now, if you own a Max Sig Namor, even at rank 3 or rank 4, or even a 4 star at rank 5, you can beat this fight in about 60 seconds. Continuously hit into Hulkbuster's block and Namor will return all of the Thorns damage to him. Since the damage increases with every blocked hit, it will take fewer than 50 blocked hits to bring the big guy down. Now, similar to Cyclops, easy access to Unblockable is also a good way to counter this fight. Aegon at max combo and Nick Fury with enough tactical charges can both ignore the enigmatic ability completely. Even if you don't have these champions though, the ability is really not too difficult to play around. Opponents in the Labyrinth are aggressive enough that you won't find yourself backed up in the corner very much. If you're used to hitting into block to bait specials, you'll just have to keep telling yourself to not do that. Now remember, this is the pre-buff Hulkbuster, so his armor ups will not reduce your ability accuracy, and he won't have the arc overload trigger, and his special attacks will not be unblockable. Juggernaut has traditionally been regarded as the most difficult fight in the Labyrinth. Juggernaut received a small adjustment a while back that made him stun immune while unstoppable. Thankfully, that mechanic is not present here, but don't think you're getting off easy. Juggernaut's enigmatic ability changes his unstoppable to passive and permanent, and can only be removed when he is hit with a heavy attack. Since the limber node limits the amount of parries you're going to get, the typical way that you need to play this fight is by baiting out a heavy after each special attack, and then countering with a heavy of your own. This results in a considerable amount of block damage, and is dangerous for champions with short reaches on their heavies. Fortunately, these days we have access to the slow debuff. Stealth Suit Spider-Man, She-Hulk, Spider-Gwen, Sorcerer Supreme, and Red Guardian can all be played in such a way that you will have a slow debuff active for the entire fight. Now the first three I listed can all solo this fight. One thing to note though is that if you're using slow, after the first enrage timer is over, the unstoppable passive will still appear, but it will not have any effect and you are still safe to counter. If you don't have access to these champions, be prepared for a very long fight and likely numerous revives. The block damage is intense, especially after the enrage timer. If you're running Aegon, this is one fight that he cannot counter simply by showing up. You'll still need to counter Juggernaut's heavies with your own heavies, and that same goes for everybody else. Magneto received a complete rework in 2020, making him one of the most powerful champions in the mutant class. Fortunately for you, none of that applies here. Magneto's enigmatic ability is very similar to part of his rework in that it reduces the ability accuracy of metal champions by 100%. However, the difference is that whenever this magnetism triggers, you are stunned for 5 seconds. 
So the best way to counter Magneto here is no surprise, avoid using any metal champions. If you're running Aegon as your primary, you'll have no issue here. Those of us who are using Guillotine 29 had to take other measures. Any non-metal champion makes this fight pretty standard, but someone you may consider using is Human Torch. Human Torch will gain Smolder on every blocked hit from Magneto since his basic attacks are energy based. In pre-fight mode, he can absolutely get this solo. Now during my run, I was using an Undupe Torch and saving the pre-fight for Maestro, and it still only took me a single revive to clear this fight. Don't really think about this one too much, overall it's pretty easy. Moon Knight received a small mechanical change in 2020 and is now able to stack his bleeds. The Moon Knight you'll face here is not affected by that. Moon Knight's enigmatic ability is also completely avoidable if you are able to precisely dodge both of his special attacks. If he hits you with a special or if you block part of it, you will get up to 4 stacks of degen. Now these degen stacks will go away if you hit Moon Knight with a special attack of your own. Pushing him to a special 2 whenever possible is the way to go here. Dodging the special one isn't too difficult, but it's not that easy to punish. The most important thing to remember about this fight is the phase of the moon. Yeah, the, the actual moon. When you plan a path that has Moon Knight on it, make sure you're aware of what phase the moon is in. You absolutely do not want to take this fight when he's in the evade phase, which is called New Moon. You can check the dates of the current phase on Aunt May. You may also want to consider fighting him during High Tide, the times of which are also shown on Aunt May. High Tide increases Moon Knight's combat power rate, enabling you to more easily push him to a special 2. The alternative is Low Tide, which decreases your combat power rate, forcing you to intercept more or take additional block damage to get your openings. If you want to see just how miserable this fight can be when he's in the evade phase, Seton made this mistake during one of his paths many many years ago. Kamala Khan's enigmatic ability is really interesting because you can either play to completely avoid it or play to punish it. Kamala is effectively debuff immune and converts any debuff received into an active fury buff. This does include your parry stuns even if the stun duration is minimized by limber. Each of these furies increases her attack by 10% and are removed when she's hit with a special attack. Now the danger here is that if you let them stack up too high, a single hit will kill you usually right after an unfortunate Labyrinth of Aid. So option one here is just to accept that Kamala's attack is going to be elevated for a large portion of the fight, more so if you're using a champion that places lots of debuffs. You can play around the ability by using your specials to remove the Furies as often as possible. Option two is to use a Mystic Champion that punishes buffs, specifically Morningstar. Coupled with the Resonate Mastery to give Kamala more Furies, Morningstar can deal a stupidly high amount of damage with a single special 2 because the energy damage circumvents the Labyrinth damage cap. Another decent option to counter the buffs is Longshot, whose special 2 will nullify all buffs and replace them with a passive Incinerate. If this attack crits, and if Pure of Heart is active, the Incinerates will do some really nasty damage. Now if you don't have room on your team for a counter here, don't really worry about it. The fight is very manageable with just about everyone as long as you aren't relying on your debuffs for damage. Rhino's enigmatic ability at first glance seems very difficult considering that most champions in the game have basic and special attacks that deal physical damage. Rhino has 90% physical resistance and physical based special attacks deal no damage to him. Fortunately there are numerous ways around this. The first is critical hits which completely ignore this resistance. A champion like Aegon will undoubtedly be fully ramped up by the time you get here, and he will be dealing the same amount of damage that you come to expect from him. The second way around it is by using any type of secondary damage. This includes damage over time, so champions with strong dot effects like Nick Fury, Gwenpool, Domino, and Human Torch will all do well here. Elsa Bloodstone will have a great time in this fight since she gains huge bonuses against XL and Science Champs. Guillotine 2099's combo-based energy damage also does wonders in this fight and helped me achieve an easy one-shot on my first attempt. On several paths, Rocket will be the last champion you fight before Maestro. His enigmatic ability is basically the opposite of Blue Cyclops and says that once he reaches two bars of power, he is unblockable. You can take this fight with any champion, just don't ever push him to two bars of power. If you do, you'll need to intercept or hit into his block, bait out a special 1, and then counter with a heavy attack to remove the unblockable. The reach on Rocket's SP1 can be a bit tricky at times, so I would recommend only doing 4 hits and then backing off if you've pushed him over a bar of power. Treat it like you would a yellow jacket and then dash back twice when you're trying to bait his special. 
There's not much else to say. This is a nice, easy fight before you get to go face Maestro. Miles is the last Spider-Verse champion in the Labyrinth, and I'll just get this out of the way now. If you have Venom, rank him up, add him to your team for this path, and don't look back. Venom automatically eliminates Miles' evade and makes this fight so easy that you could probably do it in your sleep. Red Goblin will also counter the evade in this fight, but only for the first Enrage timer. Aegon can also do this fight as long as you have access to the true accuracy buffs. Any other solid evade counter works here. Stealth Suit Spider-Man, She-Hulk, Spider-Gwen, Killmonger, Gwenpool, Apoc, Professor X, Emma Frost, Nick Fury, all great options. Keep in mind though that the majority of these options will not counter the Labyrinth Evade, just Miles' standard evade. Without a solid evade counter, you can still play this fight by not using any specials. Once Miles loses all of his evades charges that he starts the fight with, he will activate several other effects designed to prolong the fight. He does have a lowered health pool to compensate for these resistances. Now if you don't use any specials, Miles will never gain his evade charges back, and you can more or less take this fight with anyone. It will just take a little bit longer. Or you know, you, you could just use Venom. Seriously. Use Venom. Star-Lord is the first opponent you'll be facing on several of your exploration paths, and he's pretty vanilla. His enigmatic ability doubles his attack for every 15 times he hits into your block. Now since this is your first fight, I won't spend too much time on it because it's easy to restart if you don't get the solo. Anyone works here. You'll likely just want to use your primary attacker and use this fight to ramp them up if you need to. Similarly to the Red Hulk on the easy path, if you can solo this fight, you are probably ready to work toward exploration. Thor can be a pretty challenging fight. His enigmatic functions a little bit like Juggernaut's, but it's not as consistently annoying. Every time you hit Thor, you have a 5% chance to apply a dormant stun charge on yourself. These can stack up to 3 and last for 30 seconds each. If any of them expire, you are stunned for 2 seconds, which probably is going to result in you dying. The way to remove these charges is by landing a heavy attack. Fortunately, Thor has a pretty easy heavy attack to counter, so long as you have someone that has a heavy attack with some considerable reach on it. If you have 3 stacks of the stun charge on yourself, bait out a heavy and then heavy counter to remove them. Try to keep one eye on your charges because when you're in the rhythm of the fight, it's easy to forget about them. If you're using Aegon, he should be ramped up significantly by now, and you can use the Unstoppable Heavy Maneuver to remove the charges. I wasn't able to confirm this, but I think Nick Fury in his second phase should avoid the stun completely. Fair warning though, it may be similar to the Black Widow fight where the stun still affects him. Other champions that are great for this fight are Wasp and Doom, who are able to weave in heavy attacks as part of their normal rotation and then counter this enigmatic without a second thought. Guillotine 2099 works here as her heavy has a pretty significant reach on it. For my run, I use Ghost, and in hindsight, I should have taken the time to rank up Wasp instead. Again though, as long as you pay attention to your spacing, anyone with a heavy with a decent reach can counter this fight without issue. Jane Foster is a one-and-done fight that you'll take after Star-Lord on one of your paths. Her enigmatic ability is pretty similar to Colossus's, but in my opinion is far more dangerous. If you hit into her block, she'll place a 3000 damage shock debuff on you. So right off the bat, if you're used to hitting into your opponent's block to create space for yourself, bait out a special attack, or give them a little bit of power, that is completely now off the table for you. However, the real danger here is again the Labyrinth Evade. If she evades mid-combo and you aren't able to react in time, you're going to take a lot of damage. Worse yet, if she evades the first hit of your special attack, especially special attacks with many hit events, you are only going to be able to sit there helpless as the shocks pile up on you. Given that this fight is only the second on the path, my recommendation would be if you get caught with an evade and then die from shock damage, just restart your path. Getting caught by the evade happened to me several times in my run with Guillotine Special 2, and I just continued restarting until I sold both Star-Lord and her, rather than spending the revives. Ultron is basically the same fight as Labyrinth Rhino, except for energy damage instead of physical damage. Now before we go further, I want to warn you that this fight has a huge bug in it that has probably existed since the Labyrinth was introduced, and will likely never be fixed. So Ultron's enigmatic ability states that he will take no damage from energy-based special attacks. However, what ends up happening is that if you hit Ultron with an energy-based special, he becomes passively indestructible from all damage until you hit him with another energy-based special attack. It's like they coded in the no damage part but forgot to turn it off. Ultron also has his natural evade chance on top of the Labyrinth evade, so you do have to be aware of that. 
Anyone can take this fight, but there is a way for you to make it a bit faster, and that is by reversing his two self-repair phases. Now, if you use a champ like Void or Mr. Fantastic and couple that with Maxed Out Despair Mastery, Ultron will essentially KO himself. Once he hits 50% health, the first self-repair will take him down, and then it will trigger the second one, as long as you don't accidentally parry him. Now, I tried to do this with Void on my run, but I did know that the fight was bugged, and he ended up taking no damage at all instead of having his healing reversed. Chances are your primary champion will work on this fight, and keep in mind that similarly to Rhino, critical hits will bypass this resistance. Magneto is also a great option for this fight since he can also bypass the damage cap in Labyrinth completely. As long as you avoid champions whose damage is primarily energy based, you should be fine. When this content was introduced, Venompool was one of the trickiest fights, but these days his enigmatic ability is actually pretty common. First off, Venompool is completely debuff immune. The debuffs will still get placed, but will be removed a split second later. Secondly, any buff that you activate is automatically copied by him. Now this sounds pretty bad, especially if you're running a fully ramped Aegon. However, the key here is that while one of his copied buffs is active, he will not copy additional buffs. Also, it seems like not all buffs in the game are able to be copied by him. He won't copy things like True Accuracy, for instance. The other problem is in this fight is Venompool's signature ability, which grants him a random buff every so often. Now, there are two buffs that you need to be worried about here, and that is Unstoppable and Regeneration. If the Unstoppable triggers during your combo, there's really not much you can do about it. More concerning is the Regen. Now, there are two different Regen buffs that he can trigger. One of them ticks for only 2 health per second, but the other ticks for 50,000 health per second. If you don't have a way to counter the Regen, the common practice has been to just quit out of the fight at that point. Most heal reversal techniques rely on debuffs, and they aren't effective here. You can passively heal block him with Warlock or Mysterio if you so choose. If you're using one of the big damage champs like Aegon or Guillotine or Strife, you can just out damage the regen. Another option for this fight is Blade with Ghost Rider and Sparky. Danger Sense will not only help stop his buffs from triggering, but it actually stops the enigmatic ability completely and will allow you to place bleeds on him without them being removed. Other AAR champs like Domino can accomplish the same thing. A Mystic Champ with easy access to Nullify or a passive Stagger will also work, but keep in mind, Venompool's debuff immunity actually means that someone like Doom won't be able to do his normal rotation and Symbiote Supreme's damage will be completely gimped without the bleeds. Morningstar and Dragon Man can both automatically reduce the potency of the regen if they're duped. Morningstar can detonate the buffs with their special 2 as well. Other Mystics that could work well here are Magic, Tigra, and Mojo. If you're really brave, Doctor Strange would automatically nullify them as well. If you're at the point, though, when you're doing Labyrinth, you should be pretty used to debuff immune fights like this one. The final champ to cover here is OG Vision, whose enigmatic ability I actually found quite fun. Every time you dash back, you will lose 5% of your maximum power. If you have no power and dash back, you'll be stunned. Now, the way to play this fight is pretty simple. Start the fight off by using up several of your parries in order to get your, get your power level up out of the danger zone. From there, you can play the fight in one of two ways. The safe way is just to never use any specials, which gives you 20 dashbacks and a huge buffer in the event that Vision becomes very passive. The other way is to use your specials as you normally would, but wait until you are almost at the next full bar of power before you do. Using your special 3 in this fight is very risky and I would advise against it. As long as you manage your power levels and keep in mind that Vision still has his synthesis ability, the fight should be an easy solo for you. The one thing I do want to talk about quickly here is how to play this fight with Guillotine 2099. As you probably know, Gilly requires you to end the fight with a special 3 in order to set herself up for the next fight. Now this may seem a bit tricky given that your power is constantly being taken from you. It will take a full 5 hit combo to regain 5% of your power, so what you want to do is when you're approaching the end of the fight and you have a full bar of power ready, bait out a heavy attack from him, dash back once to avoid it, then land a full combo and finish with your special 3. If he throws a special 1, just block it. The special 2 is unblockable, so you'll have to dodge that one. In the event that the special 3 doesn't kill him outright, but he does die from the energy damage, it will still count towards your Digisoul. I sold this fight twice, and it was among my most enjoyable encounters in this content. The last thing I want to talk about in this guide is designing your paths. If you don't want to follow one of the commonly used Labyrinth Path maps for exploration, you do have a very small amount of flexibility when it comes to designing your own paths. However, if you're going to do this, I cannot stress enough that you plan all of your remaining paths at the same time to ensure that you have covered every part of the map. 
There are several paths on the map that I've highlighted on screen that are easy to miss. I said this in a previous entry of the guide and it's worth reiterating. You do not want to be stuck at 99% exploration and have no idea which section of the map that you missed. If that happens, print out a map and retrace all of your paths to find out what you missed. You can also try submitting a ticket. In the past, sometimes the support rep will let you know what section you didn't cover. Doing an extra path would already suck, but it will be worse if you go in completely blind. Well folks, that's it for part 4 and really concludes the overall guide to the Labyrinth of Legends. In the future, I think I'd like to do some champion specific Labyrinth guides. It's easy to say just use Aegon, but not everyone has him and there are other great champs that can also do this content. If you enjoyed this guide or any of the previous entries, please hit that like button for me, subscribe for more content, and make sure to click that notification bell so you can know when new stuff goes live. And finally, as usual, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.